Uh, from my end here, uh, this is Emmanuel Okello from UCT Davis, a uh, cooperative extension. I just want to give uh, some updates on uh, <clears throat> what's happening in the dairy industry with regards to antimicrobial stewardship. Uh, specifically, I'm focused on uh, mastitis or dry cow treatment of mastitis uh, and looking at some strategies that is being used in the dairy industry to reduce antimicrobial drug use. <clears throat> I just want to give a, a brief overview of uh, mastitis in dairy cattle. Uh, this is one of the most important diseases in the, the dairy industry uh, because of the cost of the disease. <clears throat> and it's also one of the major indications for antimicrobial drug use. The, um, according to the USDA uh, survey of 2015, it actually shows that um, it's occurring on up, on almost all the dairy operations uh, in the US, 99.7%. And um, up to 89.9, that's 90% of the US dairy cows uh, do receive antimicrobial uh, dry cow treatment at the end of every lactation. <clears throat> so it's one of the areas that uh, uh, we could uh, reduce antimicrobial drug use. <clears throat> Um, just to, again, give overview of the mastitis control program, there are several strategies that are available for controlling mastitis uh, on dairy farms. Uh, among them includes uh, vaccines. There are vaccines available for gram-negative bacteria like coliforms and staphylococcus gram-positive. Um, good milking practice is also one major component of uh, mastitis control. But again, uh, <clears throat> dry cow treatment are uh, using antimicrobial has actually been a mainstay of mastitis control uh, since the 1970s. It's one of the <clears throat> five, uh, one of the five points of uh, mastitis control. So um, the aim of dry cow therapy is actually to um, <clears throat> treat any existing subclinical infection at the end of a lactation and also prevent uh, any possible new infections occurring during the dry period and the, and the early lactation, next lactation. So um, a common strategy has always been a blanket dry cow treatment where all the cows that are being dried receive uh, uh, intramammary antimicrobial infusion. At the, at the end of the lactation after the last uh, last milking. But then uh, selective dry cow therapy is one way uh, that we could uh, <clears throat> just select cows that would benefit from this treatment. Uh, and um, the cows that have a subclinical uh, mastitis that would actually benefit from this, uh, this, this treatment. <clears throat> so um, there are two kind of ways to look at uh, selective dry cow treatment in terms of benefits. One way is to uh, introduce, to reduce uh, antimicrobial usage by limiting administration only to cows that have subclinical infection and that would uh, benefit from uh, that treatment. And also there's some economic benefits. If, you, if you're only giving treatment to a small number of cows, uh, you you save on the cost of antimicrobial drugs and also the labor involved in the, in the treatment. <clears throat> so, uh, but before you think of uh, applying a selective dry breakout treatment on, on, on a heart, there are certain things that need to be considered to, to ensure that the heart is ready for that. So this should actually be hearts that have uh, good, good management. So when you talk about good management, you're looking at uh, the bulk tank, total bulk tank somatic cell count, uh, which should be less than 250 cells per meal. Some experts think uh, 200 is a cutoff. It's a point of argument, but generally good heart, good heart management with low bulk tank somatic cell count is a good indication that a heart, heart is ready for, <clears throat> for selective dry cow treatment. And that goes along with the good records. And also if you have controlled already all the contagious uh, pathogens. Um, as long as uh, 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 doing selective dry cow treatment is advantageous, but uh, the main challenge is always how do you uh, how to identify the cows that have subclinical infection. So uh, the dairy industry has been looking at different ways. The most common uh, strategy to identify cows with subclinical mastitis has always been uh, uh, somatic cell count. <clears throat> 
um, record um, CMT score, uh, CMT test, if you do a CMT test for all the cows uh, or bacterial culture. If you do bacterial culture, for sure, you know if there's a clinical infection or not. But uh, all these methods work quite well, although it's a uh, labor intensive. For example, if you're doing bacterial culture, you need to get these cows, take the samples, and then wait uh, one, two days for your result to come back and get the same cows uh, and select the ones that you want to treat or the ones that you don't want to treat, the ones that are, that are healthy. So, um, <clears throat> There are other ways that the industry have been looking at alternatives, for example, to use uh, to use algorithm that is based on cow record or cow factors uh, that can give a, a clear, a, a close, a, a close approximation of the risk of that particular cow for getting mastitis during the dry during the dry period. Uh, one of those factors that you do want to look at is the history of uh, clinical mastitis. If a cow has had mastitis in the previous uh, lactation once or twice, and if the cow <clears throat> has had isomatic uh, cell count history continuously for the last two or three uh, tests during the previous lactation. Um, <clears throat> so uh, these are factors that can really be integrated into an algorithm that helps to guide the selection uh, uh, selection of cows for, for, for treatment at dry off. But then uh, we wanted to make this a little bit more uh, robust and also look at other factors that can be incorporated into the, <clears throat> into the algorithm. So I'll, I'll give a brief outline of uh, a clinical trial uh, that we did uh, to look at other cow factors and environmental factors <clears throat> that can help guide uh, selection of cows for selective treatment. Um, so we we enrolled cows and uh, allocated them in two different groups: the, the ones that re receive antibiotic treatment, uh, antibiotic and uh, internal tetsilin, internal tetsilin, and the ones that do not receive any treatment at the end of the of lactation. <clears throat> So um, our outcome showed that uh, there was really no big difference uh, in the incidence of mastitis between the different uh, treatment groups. Um, although the, the group that received no treatment had slightly higher uh, prevalence of mastitis, 23%, compared, for example, to the group that received, group two that received uh, the antibiotic and the internal T still an 18%, but these differences were, were not significant. Also, if you looked at the, <clears throat> the likelihood of uh, the cows getting mastitis during the subsequent lactation, uh, all the cows that received treatment had lower odds of uh, mastitis in the next lactation, but again, these, uh, these differences were not, were not significant. But we identified uh, other factors that can be uh, incorporated uh, into an algorithm for, for selecting cows. So at uh, the breed, uh, <clears throat> for example, the Jersey breed has lower odds of uh, uh, mastitis uh, generally compared to the Alstein. And um, cows that are high parity, that, that are in the third or more lactation, have uh, higher odds of, uh, of mastitis. Also, when you look at the Titan score, <clears throat> cows with the Titan score of four, for two or more quarters also had higher odds of mastitis. And similarly, a CMT score of three for more than one quarter. <clears throat> so uh, these are kind of lessons that uh, we've learned from this and uh, <clears throat> would help uh, to support uh, the development of more uh, precise algorithm for selecting cows that need to be treated and that would benefit from uh, from the treatment at the end of uh, lactation. So it would it would be beneficial to, for example, to consider the, the number of lactation, the T10 score, the CMT score, uh, and also the history of clinical clinical mastitis. One thing that also came out was season, uh, cows that were enrolled in summer or had higher odds of uh, culling and lower odds of developing new bacterial infection. 